movie coming out, and it is not a glowing profile of Mitt Romney that's going to show at this convention. Instead, it is a stinging indictment of President Obama. The movie's called The Hope and the Change, and it highlights 40 Democrats and independents who voted for President Obama back in 2008, who now say they are disillusioned. Here's a little clip. The party's over. Smoke is clear. He didn't come up with any solutions. He didn't make good on any of his promises. Our credit rating went down. Taxes are going up. Deficit is going up. Food costs are astronomical. We're spending way too much. He promised to change, and we all got fooled. The film was produced by Citizens United, which is a conservative nonprofit advocacy group. And the writer and director of the film, Steve Bannon, joins me now. It's nice to see you. Thanks for Thanks talking for with us. Certainly so appreciate it. What a film. Well, often Citizens United, we know, funds a lot of ads. And that's been a real strategy during the election on both sides, right? To funnel a lot of money into attacking the other guy through an ad. Why do a full length film? I think Citizens United, actually, their big thing is to do films. They've done films in the past. Like uh, Dave Bossy, who's my producing partner on this, actually went to the Supreme Court to have the right to make films like Michael Moore advertise them without having to put the disclaimer on it. That so was he, the Hillary Clinton it, it, film back yeah, in 2008. Exactly. He, in fact, the unintended consequences of that was the super PACs and all that. He actually went to make like this and so we could go put it up on cable TV, do a commercial deal and what's then take a, ads What's on. the benefit of a film rather than a bunch of attack ads? I think a film gets, I think in this film, what we did is we've taken a year to go, last year we had this idea, let's go, we thought in the run up to the election, the key people would be people who had voted for President Obama, Democrats and independents who were either leaning towards not voting or leaning towards not voting for President Obama. So we retained the services of guys like Pat Cadell and Kendra Stewart, Democratic strategists, to help us go do focus groups. So we went to the key battleground states, the key districts within those states. You remember Peter Hamby of CNN wrote an article about Henriker County. We went right to Henriker County. So these people are all registered Democrats and independents from the absolute micro-targeting that David Axelrod's doing. In fact, I would think David Axelrod's been to, done these same focus groups, at, at the same focus groups, the same people. You know, it's, well, Rollins did, go ahead, Rollins. I'm just curious, how do you deal with folks who lie? So for instance, when the, I heard one of the women say, oh my God, taxes have gone down up. When you look at the stimulus bill, actually the 40% of that actually tax cuts. And so when you look at analysis, we look at an analysis of what has happened, yep. taxes have actually they have not gone up. So when somebody lies in the, the film, the, what do you the, do? These are called voters? No, no, right, but yeah. they also lie. No, no. Well, I mean, voter, remember, voters can be low-information voters. They could be mid-information voters. We went and took a pool of voters, right, who voted for President Obama, who are active in the voter pool today, registered voters who are likely to vote. Uh, some said they're not going to vote because they may not vote for President Obama. But we got their, their feelings. And some of them had information that's not absolutely perfect. I mean, some, a lot of them don't know a lot about Obamacare. But if, so somebody, so but if somebody lied, like saying, why would it include the lie in the So, in the so it sounds like you're saying it doesn't matter to you if their information of the voter is accurate or if it's... No, it's, well, it, no it, it, it matters. But when they're, talking about their, when they're talking about their own personal beliefs, some of that is in there. Absolutely. So, but taxes going up isn't a personal belief, it's a, a fact, right? Well, so, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a belief of hers. So if it's, you it's, it's, for, the 40 voters <laughs> in the film, what was the common, what was the common anti-Obama sentiment from these 40 The common anti-Obama sentiment, by the way, the film starts off, it, it, initially, it looks like the Obama campaign film. We go back to 2008 when they had this uh, great emotional pull to him. I think it's that... Uh, he didn't fulfill his promises. I think they felt he was going to focus on the economy, That's focus right. on jobs, focus on, you know, making the American economy stronger and really focus on getting them back to work and uniting the country. So I think when you talk to them, they feel the country's more divided than ever. And in their lives, they feel like the, the economy's not coming back. I mean, this is a film of the working class, and the middle class in this country. And well, I think is they Is it feel, preaching to the choir, though? I mean, you know, you basically, okay, those 40 people. We're actually not. In fact, that's why I didn't have any conservatives. There's no conservative subject matter experts. Other films I make have conservative talking heads in them. Here, it's these are all Democrats. In fact, we're going to take this to the Democratic National Convention next week and play it in a theater across the street. We'll be advertising this on CNN and MSNBC. This is not really for the Fox audience. This is really for those undecided. Uh, and really I've been to Massachusetts and found some voters that voted for Romney uh, back when he was governor, but aren't going to support him in the presidency, which the polls in Massachusetts say there are, you know, thousands. How much, by the way, what David, do you think they would have said? Well, David say? Axelrod had something yeah. the other day when, when the, yeah. we had a special on Fox on Sean. Saying, you can find yeah. voters who supported someone and then flipped and then flipped this the well, but, but, but I think, I think that I, by the way, we went to, we, this is just not 40 voters. We yeah. did focus groups for over a year. We had, de by the way, there were yeah. Democratic strategists that did these focus groups for us. I think those. Well, Pat Cadell is no longer really. Let me ask you one last quick question. And I 
I get your point on this, but you know, when, when people do analysis of the race, they keep saying, and Jill Klein was saying this earlier, it cannot be about the other guy, right? And we've heard this on That's both right. sides. It cannot be the other guy did this. It has to be, here's what my vision is. Isn't that the inherent problem in your documentary? It really is, here's the other guy. We no, round no, up a bunch but, of voters but, but, who do way, not like him. No, but if we did, no, by the way, these are his supporters. That's remember, these are people that actively supported him. These are people that voted for him. What I want to do is take a slice of that, which people call the undecideds today, and I think they're undecided is, are they actually going to go vote this time? Hmm. And so I want to take a slice that this is not a pro Romney. It's not a pro Romney film. It it's was an not, anti Obama film. It's it's a it's a film I think that gets. I think it's, <laughs> it's a, an anti Obama. Let me help you with that. Let me help you with that. It's a film that lays out argument of the undecided. Let me help you with that. That's an anti Obama film. We're out of time. This is why we're wearing boots today because you step in a whole lot of it. It's an anti Obama. See, Van, nice to have you to come in and talk about it. It'd be interesting to see the reaction you get when you show that at the DNC next week. But we'll talk about it then. We gotta take a short break. We're back in just.